Demoiselle de Avignon is really Picasso's move fully into Cubism. With this painting, the Spanish painter Picasso offended the Paris art scene in 1907. He would show his eight foot square canvas to a group of painters, patrons, and art critics at his studio. And he meets with almost unanimous shock, distaste, and outrage. The painter Matisse is angered by the work, which he considered a hoax, an attempt to paint the fourth dimension. Quote, it was the ugliness of the faces that froze with horror the half converted, the critic Solomon wrote later. The painter de Rain commented wryly, one day we shall find Picasso has hanged himself behind his great canvas. Now, in the months leading up to the painting's creation, Picasso struggles with the subject, what were originally five women in a brothel. He would create over 100 sketches and preliminary paintings, wrestling with the problem of depicting three-dimensional space in a two-dimensional picture plane one that we've dealt with throughout, but he doesn't want to use the standard tools of illusion. The original composition included two men, a patron surrounded by the women, and a medical student holding a skull, perhaps symbolizing that the wages of sin are death. But in the final composition, the patron is gone, and the medical student, who has been called a stand-in for the painter himself, has become a fifth woman with a primitive mask holding back the crimson curtain to reveal her, well, quote-unquote, sisters. The painting is described as a battleground with the remains of the battle left on the canvas. The Iberian women in the center of the canvas clash with the hideously masked creatures standing and squatting on the right. In creating La Demoiselle de Avignon, Picasso turns his back on the middle-class society and traditional values of the time, opting for the sexual freedom depicted in a brothel. He also rejects popular current movements in painting by choosing line drawing rather than color, and light uh, defined forms of impressionism in the fauve. So he's going with a more linear composition, which is in stark contrast to everything else we've seen in France up until this point. Now, the painter's private demons take shape in the figures on the canvas. Picasso later calls Demoiselle de Avignon my first exorcism painting. He likens the act of painting to that of creating fetishes or weapons. If we give spirits a form, we become independent, states Picasso. Now, the originality of Picasso's vision and execution in this work helps plant the seeds of Cubism. After its initial showing, the painting remains largely unseen for 39 years. It is shown in Paris in 1916 and then lies rolled up in Picasso's studio until it's bought in the early 1920s, sight unseen by an art dealer. It is then going to be reproduced in the publication La Révolution surrealist in 1925, but remains relatively unknown until 1937, when it's eventually shown in Paris. Today, the Museum of Modern Art in New York owns it, and it becomes a prized part of their collection. But let's look at the piece overall. Now, this is less than a year after he's done Gertrude Stein, or the painting of Gertrude Stein. And we see a radical new method of representing the form in space. So what exactly are we looking at? Well, we're looking at faces that are based on African masks, such as the example here. You can see the commonalities, the similarities between the forms. And he's looking at the masks, in this case, looking at their sense of innocent sexuality, which he assigns and society assigns to the masks in the early 20th century. Instead of continuous forms, the women are fractured and interwoven with jagged planes that represent the drapery as well as the negative space. He's really pushing Cezanne's treatment of form and space to its absolute limit, or the limit that he sees at the time. The faces on the left are based on 
Iberian stone masks, whereas the ones on the right are based on African masks. So where is he getting these ideas? He's getting it through colonization. Of course, the French had heavily colonized Africa at the time, especially parts of northern and western Africa. Now, he will break the forms into a series of planes. And as he does this, especially on the right, he's again using those identifiable characteristics. So as we move through it, for example, uh, here, this woman in the center, you'll see one breast is in profile, the other is seen from below. These are identifiable forms, whereas another is seen not with sort of an angular form, but rather as round forms. When we look at the women themselves, sometimes we see different aspects. Here we see the tricep, part of the muscle of the arm being shown as if we're looking below the arm, upward. And here we see an arm that's way out here and we're almost looking down at it. Uh, some very odd perspectives as he moves forms around. In the masks, he's treating just like the other faces. So here's a jaw turned in a form that we very easily recognize. The mouth is here, the nose again in profile, the eyes independent of one another, and of course an ear that we wouldn't typically see, but he has tacked it on because it is something that he believes is particularly important to that face. Now, he goes one step further. When we move over to the woman on the left, you'll notice this very odd sort of leg. And what he's done is he's sort of deboned the leg. Imagine you take someone's leg and you remove the flesh and remove the bone and then cut it down sort of the inner side of it and flop it out on a table. You're going to get something like this. Here's the hamstring. Here's the quadricep. Here's the calves on one side, the shin in the middle. Here's the calf on the inside as well as on the outside. He's actually applied the cubist idea to the musculature of the woman. These jagged forms in the background give us a sense of time, but also it's been argued that those jagged forms and the forms that the women take are Picasso kind of arguing against the brothel itself, trying to make it as ugly and uninviting as possible. After all, who really wants to enter into this painting? So there's a lot going on here, but we definitely get a sense of the cubism and how cubism is developing. Also, the fact that cubism has nothing to do with the straight lines that we usually associate it with, but rather can use the curvilinear forms of the human body and of other forms, such as the fruit in the foreground or some of the curtains that we see in the background. This is a revolutionary piece, and that's why we're spending so much time with it.